Let's look at how to create a binomial distribution or a probability distribution. Once I've determined something as a binomial probability distribution, I can outline all of the possible things that could happen. So construct a binomial probability distribution with the given parameters, n is 6 and p is 3. Now what the heck does that mean? Let's put it in a real world context. n is the total number of uh, a, t a times an event is attempted. So this is the total. For example, if I'm in a basketball game and I get up to make six free throws, n would be the total number of times I got up to the uh, free throw line. Well, p, the probability of success. Given my past track record, I might know I have a 0.3 probability of successful three throws. So how do we create a probability distribution? Well, you can do this by hand. I'm not going to do it by hand. You can use a chart in the back of the book. Also not going to do that because I know what's coming and I know that using Excel is going to be super helpful. So I'm going to open up a blank Excel document. Um, Excel has some great functions built into it, one of which is figuring out these probability distributions all on its own. You have to enter in a few what we call parameters, and Excel does all the rest of the work for you. So I'm going to start by creating a table. Okay. Um, I have the number of events and the ways um, and the probability of that event occurring. Now let's think about what happens when I get up to the probability or up to the free throw line. I could make zero of my free throws. I could make one, two, three, four, five, or six. That n value or total really tells you what your stopping point is. I'm going to stop at six free throws. That's the total number of times I got up nine. Now how do I figure out the probability of events occurring? They are a binomial distribution. So I'm going to go up to my um, tab in Excel. I'm going to go to my formulas tab and insert a function. And I know the search box is a little bit small, so I'll tell you I am searching for the word binomial binomial. I'm just typing it in there. A bunch of things come up. I'm going to choose B-I-N-O-M-D-I-S-T. Binome dist. And I hit OK. And it's going to ask me to fill in a couple of values. And I can't make the box any bigger. But the first one says number S. Number of successful outcomes. Well, first, one, first row on my table, this is really my X value. Um, and I look like I'm putting it in the wrong spot here. I want to put it right next to the number 0. So let's make sure we get it right next to its number 0. There we go. My first row is zero successes. I didn't do very well. The second says trials. It's how many times I got up to the free throw line. The probability was given to you as 0 0.3, and it says cumulative. This is just an argument that Excel needs, um, and we, uh, we want this to be false. I'm going to put this, no, the number zero in there. Um, zero in computer language represents false, and I am too lazy to type out false every single time I do this. So I'm just going to put the number 0 in and hit OK. It says I have about 11, about a 12% chance, 0.1176, about a 12% chance of making zero free throws. And we're just going to repeat the process a bunch of times. Aren't you glad we um, are not doing this by hand? We just put in our number of successes. That's the only thing that changes is 1. I'm still getting up to the line six times, my probability is still the same, and that argument is still going to be false. And it's going to do this, I'm just going to repeat the process. The only thing that changes is that first value, which is the x value. And this will give me the probability for each event occurring based on my past track record and my probability of making free throws. And you'll see in just a moment after I finish this up why I really wanted to use Excel to do this and I did not want to um, 
do it with a table or by hand. Success. Uh, and one other thing to note, notice I'm not searching for the binome dist every time. That's because when I hit insert function, it remembers the last thing I used. And I can just click on that. Handy, handy, nice of Excel to do that for me. So I don't have to search every single time. I'm almost done. Let's see if we can't make these values a little bit larger for you. I don't want to make them quite that large, so I want to have a little bit of room for my next part. Six successes. Oh, I made them all. What's the probability of me making all six of them? Oh, look at that, Point zero 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 seven two nine. Not very good. Okay, so you can actually copy and paste this. I can copy it. I can go over to my template where it says um, use um, the chart below. I can actually just copy and paste my chart in. Hi. So you don't have to do all those typings of all those decimal points. Compute the stan mean and standard deviation using the methods presented in 6.1. Show your work. It is strongly suggested you use Excel to assist you. Okay, so how do we use Excel? And, and then the work we're going to show is actually going to be um, just copying and pasting my Excel work. We're going to do the mean and the standard deviation all at once. The first thing we had to do was to find the mean. We had to multiply the the event times the probability. We talked about this in our last section, multiplying the zero times the probability. Now you can have Excel do this for you by typing an equal sign and clicking on the cells you want it to multiply. Now notice I did use the star for multiplication. That's the um, standard way. And then I hit enter. I'm going to do this one more time. And the star is above the number 8, by the way. You have to press the shift key. Now, here's the cool part of Excel. This is why this is so cool. Once you've done it once, you could click in the cell you just did the calculation in. It turns black. Put your cursor on the bottom right-hand side, and it will turn into a cross. Drag the cross down until you want it to stop calculating, and it knows. It picks up on the pattern, and it multiplies each of these individually. It goes, goes right across. Now remember the mean or the expected value was the sum of all of these. So I'm going to cheat. Instead of adding this up with a calculator, I'm going to tell Excel to add it up for me. I'm going to say equal sign, type the word sum, and have a parenthesis, and then just highlight or drag down all of the ones I wanted to add. Close the parenthesis. Oh look! It did it for me. Super cool. Okay, now due to video length requirements, we're going to do the standard deviation in part number two.